Can you believe it's only been three weeks since Tesla launched their RoboTaxi service in Austin? There's already been a massive expansion. Thought it was worthwhile revisiting a clip. This was about one week after the RoboTaxi service first launched, so roughly two weeks old, to listen in and hear what was being said about Tesla, the company, and importantly, autonomy. Deliveries fell year on year and they missed estimates, but not by as much as analysts had feared. Joining us now, George Janarikas, Canaccord Genuity Analyst in Philippeau, is also with us. Great to have you guys. George, I, I want to start off with you because, uh, you know, this was better than feared, but at the same time, it doesn't lift the burden that Tesla has to fill in terms of hitting delivery numbers in order to make the annual number by the end of the year. They've got a big weight to lift at this point, and at the same time, they've got the EV uh, tax credit going away. How do you foresee uh, Tesla hitting those numbers if, if you do? It'll be a hard slog for them to hit those numbers, particularly, as you mentioned, with the EV tax credit going away. The thing that we're thinking about for the back half of the year is a couple of or maybe a few new models that they've promised. It was recently disclosed in their impact report uh, that they expect new, more affordable models to come by the end of the year. So that should help. But your point is valid. I mean, we have to see EVs get back to growth, hopefully by the end of the year maybe in 2026 but it's a key part obviously of the story but investors seem to be relying upon you know excitement around robo taxi and optimus to drive the stock here yeah and since this went to here literally overnight tesla announces at least in china an extended literally extended model y a six-seater option which now is the most affordable six-seater tesla vehicle no longer need to buy a model x they've also announced an expansion into india which admittedly it's an extremely large market full of people who can't afford to buy a Tesla. So don't expect this to be a massive needle mover at Model Y price points. But it's a pretty positive sign that Tesla has more affordable vehicles around the corner. Expanding into India, selling a vehicle that probably a fraction of 1% of the population might even have a hope of potentially affording, that's not the end goal. That's just opening the door for more affordable vehicles to be sold into the India market in the future. And now here the conversation shifts to autonomy. Keeping in mind again that this went to air about one week after the launch of the RoboTaxi service in Austin, which has subsequently expanded. Yeah, and it's interesting, Phil, because RoboTaxi, for as many fans and influencers were in those taxis riding around, posting about it, there are also um, some misses when it came to some of those rides. Mm -hmm. um, Elon Musk has also promised a lower cost of vehicle, which, which may also spur some excitement later on this year. Um, how do you see that side of the equation playing out, Phil? Well, let's start first off with RoboTaxi. Um, th this is how Tesla operates now. Tesla is very much about we're going to be out on social media. We're going to have the influencers out there. We're going to have our supporters, including those analysts who are very bullish about us, talk about how great RoboTaxi and our autonomous vehicle technology is. The reality is they have launched a very small launch in Austin. Now here, here comes the challenge. You have got to show, A, that you can not only do it consistently and... Well... I have an update. There's not been a single safety critical incident, at least caught on film. Service has completed many, many thousands of rides now. So clearly, Tesla is doing it consistently, without incident. So they're doing it consistently and safely. Big tick. What else is Phil about to say that investors need to see on Tesla RoboTaxi? And safely, it doesn't matter how many times you post on social media, but if you can do that, and then if you can expand on a, on a fairly regular basis then you will start to see people really get behind the robo-taxi and AV story at Tesla. More well, well, well. Turns out that Tesla's met every one of Phil's criteria for investors getting behind and or excited about robo-taxi. They've been doing it consistently and safely, and they've expanded rapidly. As I mentioned yesterday, though, I'm still kind of puzzled why we haven't seen a bunch of new notes from analysts. I and mean, after all, the expansion occurred during the week. It's not like they were taking time off over the weekend. This is the biggest development and massive proof point. Tesla does have a generalized solution. They can expand in any direction they want. The drop of a hat. This is huge. I'm still waiting. So credit to Phil for describing what people would need to see, which we've now seen, although I was saying years ago, what would happen. So it was obvious if you'd thought about it, but now we don't need to think about it and anticipate because we can literally see it happening. So the real question now, more out of curiosity than anything else, is when will the penny drop? For many investors, those who don't already understand Tesla's developed a generalized solution to autonomy, their vehicles know how to drive, period. They'll scale extremely rapidly and in essentially no time at all. Tesla RoboTaxis will be ubiquitous, omnipresent, and so much more affordable to use than any other comparable service, including human-driven or other RoboTaxis from other companies like Waymo. 
when does the penny actually drop? How many more rapid expansions or do they need to see multiple cities? Like, Where is it along this sort of timeline of milestones where analysts start to realise, where big institutional investors start to realise? More than the core believers. The core believers are always going to be there. They're not going to leave. They're, they would have to be shown something dramatically different in order to give up on Tesla. And then with regard to the more affordable model, Melissa, look, I think everybody understands that's what's holding back EV sales and will continue to hold back EV sales in the U.S. Uh, after the, the tax credit goes away, the $7,500 tax credit goes away. You need to bring down the price of EVs. You get it down consistently in that forty, that thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollar range, and not just a couple of models, then I think you will start to see EVs take off a bit. Right, and that's a good point in terms of offsetting the loss of the tax credit with a lower price model. Uh, but George, you know, when it comes to ultimate valuation, Tesla, you know, blue sky sort of valuations, the most bullish analysts rely on robo taxi, autonomous vehicles, uh, you know, Optimus. All these things that are not the auto business, right, for the most bullish forecast. So how important for you is the working of the auto business when it's really these other areas that are not quantifiable right now, not commercialized right now for that matter, um, in order to drive the valuation higher? I'm a pretty meat and potatoes kind of analyst, so I just try to look at earnings. And right now, before they report earnings, we're about $9 in non-GAAP EPS in 2027. We'll see how that have to be adjusted when they report. But, you know, you should put a healthy multiple, in our opinion, on that number. It's going to take a lot to get there. They have to return to growth in EVs. They have to get margins better. But if you can get to $9 plus or minus in 2027 and then have these dreams of more optimist by 2030, additional robo-taxi miles by 2030, you can sort of justify the stock here and get to even higher levels if those, you know, businesses start to take off. So we're all about earnings. Uh, I, we don't really do some of the parts valuations. But if you can get to that kind of earnings number and, something even better than that in 2030 then i think the stock works make no mistake when it comes to ai in particular autonomy and the optimus humanoid robot the penny absolutely has not dropped among deep pocketed big investors had it tesla's market cap would not be a mere roughly one trillion dollars and on that note today tesla dropped a video of fsd supervised operating in sydney australia in fact on screen now this is my backyard almost literally as you watch this, ask yourself the question, how long until Tesla could legally be operating Model Y robo taxis in Sydney, in the central business district where this drive occurs? It's extremely high density, full of 30, 40 plus storey buildings, residential buildings, offices, not like a typical US city that is much more spread out. The reason I mentioned this density is that Tesla robo taxis would not need to be operating over a large area in terms of square kilometers slash square miles to service an enormously large market of by the way fairly deep pocketed users so here we go driving around you'll see a few sites sydney opera house and harbour bridge later in this very drive the vehicle actually crossing the bridge as well heading north so i'll try to shut up and just let you guys watch this but the thing to pay attention to is the complete and utter lack of interventions by the supervisor
an epic ride. For those of you paying attention at home, that is the Sydney Opera House. So the Model Y has essentially gone from here, driven through the central business district, whipped around, gone through the bridge, over the bridge, onto the northern shores of Sydney. Zero interventions on the entire drive. This is a very big deal. This wasn't a tiny town in the middle of nowhere. Sydney is a city with a population of give or take five and a half million people. Massive. Not a single intervention occurred during this drive. If I didn't know any better, I'd think that one, a vision-only approach might work, and two, Desert really has developed a generalised solution to autonomy. A couple of months ago, we saw FSD supervised operating in Paris with the motherfucker of all motherfucker roundabouts, operating in Amsterdam, we've seen China, illegally operating robo-taxis in Austin, Texas. The next 6, 12, 18 and 24 months are going to be absolutely wild. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.